And welcome back to On the Hash with Hatfield here on our podcast with the folks from Hometown Sports Productions and the Plex in Virginia Beach. We are pleased to be joined by a special guest. He is the head football coach in his first season with the Tab Tigers, but he's a face that is pretty familiar to those that have followed the high school football scene in Tidewater. He was once the head football coach at Menchville High in Newport News, was part of a very successful coaching staff at Lafayette that won a state championship during the uh, COVID year. In fact, uh, he was with Andy Lynn for quite a while, and now in his first year, we're in the orange and black with the uh, white shirt today we say hello to our pal coach john byron 2-0 on the season coach congrats on the start so far how's life treating you no oh, it's it's going good so far uh it's it's been a uh a transition over the course of the last seven eight months since uh since i took the job at tab uh but we've got uh, a great support staff here i've got a uh, a good coaching staff on with me that uh that helps make my job a little bit easier well, I want to get to the uh, big matchup coming up for your squad in a rivalry game with the uh, York Falcons. The series is 30 wins, 30 losses, one tie. So this is the all seriousness, the rubber match in the 50th year anniversary of this. But before we get to that and some of your key contributors, the players that have helped you to this 2-0 and start so far with wins over Heritage of Newport News 28-19 to and a shutout of Jamestown of Bay Rivers District foe 28 to nothing. Fill the uh, audience in on a little bit more of your background, your, your playing days, college days, how you got into coaching, and then what drew you to this job at TAB? Because I know you were enjoying the time as a lieutenant and assistant, if you will, to Andy Lynn there at Lafayette. Things were going well. I think you got a chance to coach your son over there, too. Uh, what what drew you to the job at TAB? Yeah, so uh, just start off with a little bit of my background. So I, I played football at Bridgewater College, and uh, why I was there, I also – uh, ended up receiving my teaching degree, decided that I wanted to go into coaching, and uh, I spent my first five years at Brookville High School out of Lynchburg, Virginia. And, uh, you know, Brookville High School was a great place for me to start my coaching career. Uh, I learned from a lot of the guys that were there uh, that had been coaching for several years. And, uh, and then after five years, I decided that I wanted to uh, take a shot at being a head football coach. And I took the job at Mitchville High School. Um, certainly, uh, you know, young and, uh, you know, a little bit probably naive in terms of just uh, how much uh, of, a, of a big task that job was. And, uh, you know, but I had I was fortunate uh, to be able to learn a lot through that process. Uh, I had a lot of, uh, you know, great athletes and and uh, and great coaches that I got a chance to work with during that time, and uh, and then from there I decided to uh, to uh, go to Lafayette High School, and that was Andy Lynn's first year's uh, head coach there. Although he had been there several years as an assistant, and uh, we were were very successful there over the course of the twelve years that I was there with Andy. Um, I was the defensive coordinator, and uh, and Andy was the offensive coordinator, and. You know, he, he did his side of the ball and I did my side of the ball and we collaborated with coaches. And uh, like you said, we had a lot of success. I was very fortunate uh, to win a state championship in 2020, the COVID year. Uh, we went to another state championship in 2014 and just came up a little bit short that year. Uh, but I uh, had, a, had a lot of success. And like you had mentioned, one of the most gratifying, uh, along with all the other things that was a part of it, Lafayette, is I got to coach not just one of my sons, but two of my sons and uh, my younger son, uh, when we weren't even sure if he was going to have a senior season, ended up uh, winning the state championship in the COVID year. And, uh, and so that made that uh, that much more gratifying. And then uh, I coached another two years after the state championship. And I just felt like I was getting to a point where uh, I wanted to uh, try my hand as a head coach again. Uh, the TAB program became available. And, uh, you know, TAB is, is somebody that, that I've played uh, against for the last 12 years and kind of know some background about uh, the program and uh, the Charlie Hovis years leading into Matt Lawson. And there's been a lot of consistency with the coaching staff. Uh, I believe I'm the sixth head coach uh, in the uh, – in the history of tab high school and so they've had coaches that have stayed for a long period of time and that's attributed to uh like i said the great support staff the the, the community here at in the tab community uh we have a really strong military background and uh it's uh you know so it's been uh, an enjoyable transition since i got here and uh little by little uh you know we try to get better every week 
Yeah, and we'll get to that military piece as well because you're doing something neat involving and honoring the military with your game coming up. And I know that Hovis trophy you mentioned about Coach Charlie Hovis, one of the all-time greats, three state championships, 1981, 1987, 1990, coached at both York and, of course, led Tab to some glory winning the hardware. People remember the great days of Tab football with Chris Slade, who's now an assistant at UVA, Terry Kirby, who got to play in the NFL like Chris Slade did. They were actually division rivals when uh, Slade was with the New England Patriots and Kirby played for the Miami Dolphins and the late great Don Shula. But certainly uh, going to this program at TAB, you mentioned about coaching your sons and during the COVID period, how that was crazy and very zany to deal with. Uh, but you look at it now with, with high school football, there, there's so much that's different, I think, when you started to now. What's the biggest thing you learned, Coach, from your first time as a head coach to now and your second term as a head coach from Medgefield days to TAB? Obviously, that stop in between at Lafayette, I'm sure, allowed you to soak up a lot of things. What, what have you learned that, that's maybe made you change a little bit of what you do as a head coach? Yeah, I just, so right now I try to focus each day on what's important. And uh, to me, what's important is the players. And, and I try to put that at the forefront every day. This is a very difficult job. And anybody that's a uh, head football coach or an assistant football coach, for that matter, knows the number of hours that we put into this thing. And, and so that can become uh, that can wear you down. It can become uh, frustrating. Sometimes you can get a little bit too caught up in some of the X's and O's. And even though those are important, the biggest thing for me right now is just focusing on the relationships and focusing on player development. And, uh, and I think that served me well uh, during my time as I, as I recognize that more and more uh, the longer that I've been coaching that it's more about that than it is anything else. Uh, I think the organization of what needs to happen uh, really comes down a lot of times to the experience that you have and also the people that you've had the opportunity to work with over the course of your career that really kind of helps uh, helps you take care of a lot of the little things that uh, that you know, so that so that the big things will eventually take care of themselves, and and so I think I've learned a lot during that time. Still learning more and more every day, and there's a lot more that I still need to learn. But uh, definitely uh, much more uh, suited as. Oh, we lost Coach Byron for a second there. He says a lot more suited as a head coach. We'll get him back here hopefully in just a second here as we speak to you on our edition of the podcast weekly here on the hash with Hatfield. I'm not sure if something just cut off there in terms of the internet connectivity or access, but we'll hopefully have coach back with us here in a moment. As you see some of the uh, things scrolling across our ticker here, including our recent Chicho's pizza player of the week and the tab tigers uh, football schedule. So hopefully we'll get coach Byron uh, recalibrated with us here on the hash with Hatfield as we preview their big matchup coming up on Friday. It's the rivalry showdown with the York Falcons. Uh, and he's got a lot of players that have contributed this two and zero start for his team thus far on the season. So hopefully we'll have coach Byron back with us and we will, uh, get a chance to uh, catch up with him as we discuss all that is happening with his football program over there at Tab High School as they are off to a 2 0 start beating Heritage 28 to 19 and also Jamestown 28 to nothing got that first win over the uh, Jamestown check that the Heritage Hurricanes 28 to 19 with Cam Dixon running for 158 yards and two fourth quarter touchdowns as they rallied past the uh, Hurricanes in that one got a good effort. Did Heritage throwing the football from Derek Gurley? But uh, the offensive line, I know, has been key for them with four starters back from a season ago. And his defense are really stepping up in a big way in their latest performance as they uh, shut out Jamestown 28 to nothing. So hopefully we'll get Coach Byron back up here in just a second and we can uh, have him rejoin us to discuss his squad and what all is taking place with them here on our edition of On the Hash with Hatfield. As always, you can reach out to us on our Twitter feed at 757 Sports Talk. There we go. I think we've got Coach back with us as we uh, have sometimes technical difficulties happen when, when, when you're when you're uh, doing this live and you're doing it uh, from remote locations. But uh, we appreciate you, Coach. And uh, let's get back to what you were finished up there, Sam, before you got cut off there just a little bit uh, as we'll dive into your uh, key guys that have performed thus far and also the uh, matchup on deck. But uh, just kind of, kind of elaborate, if you can, on what you were saying there before we we lost you yeah so i was just really just commenting on you know all the things that i've been able to learn over the course of my time uh as an assistant a head coach and my first uh run as head coach at Menchville till now and more or less just saying that uh you know there's a lot of things that come with experience 
and uh, the experience that I've been able to pick up on over the course of my 24 years of coaching has now just allowed me to be a better football coach and be more organized and certainly the way I delegate and uh, and also the player development and the relationships that uh, that I try to keep at the forefront of what we're doing and uh, and so I think that's that served me well and uh, like I said I also got a lot that I still need to learn and we learn every day and uh, so I try to get better at what I do every day. That's awesome. And one of the uh, players that I was talking about for you that really helped you out to this 2-0 start was Cam Dixon, 158 yards rushing, two fourth quarter touchdowns uh, he had in that comeback win against Heritage. And I know you brought back a large chunk of the offensive line from a season ago. So highlight uh, those guys, if you can, and others that have stepped up for you as you're off to a 2-0 start, trying to make it 3-0. The Tigers haven't started off this well since beginning 5-0 in 2008. Yeah, so, you know, I would start off with our guys in the trenches first, uh, although Cam is Dixon has done a fantastic job for us. Uh, you know, really the battles are one up front, as anybody in football knows. And we were fortunate to have some guys back from last year. Uh, but sort of uh, highlighting that offensive line is uh, is two young men that uh, that that really uh, give us something up front in terms of being able to uh, set the tone in the trenches. And that's uh, Diego Marine, who's a senior. It's about 6'2", 290, a big weight room guy, bench presses about 365, uh, squats over 500 pounds. I mean, he is uh, a guy that has just really gotten after it uh, in the weight room over the course of his high school career. And, uh, and then uh, Jordan Griffin, who is 6'3", 280 pounds, and he plays guard for us, and uh, he's a junior. And so we'll get him back another year. But Jordan has done an outstanding job for us as well. Uh, we had returning also. Uh, we had uh, Cam Paragoy, who uh, has kind of been a utility player for us. We've kind of moved him around a little bit. He's played some guard. He's played some tackle for us. But uh, he, he also starts for us at inside linebacker. And then uh, and then we've also got a young man that's uh, starting for us at center right now named Chandler Geigley. And, uh, and he's doing a great job for us at center. Uh, Dwayne Fair is a two-way starter. He plays tight end for us. Uh, he's about 6'1", 190. And, uh, and he uh, continues to give us uh, great looks from the tight end position and also on the other side of the ball and outside linebacker. Now, now getting into Cam Dixon, you know, Cam Dixon is a, is a throwback type player. He's a, he's just a, a kid that uh, that loves contact and uh, is a smart, tough uh, player for us, and, and and he is one of our captains and uh, and is a big part uh, of our success so far. Uh, he played outside linebacker and tight end last year, and we moved him to inside linebacker and fullback this year. And like you said, he's had three touchdowns in a game and a half because we got cut short uh, in the Jamestown game due to weather. And uh, during that time, he's rushed for over 200 yards and uh, also been a threat out of the backfield for us, too. Uh, but Cam is, uh, is, a, is a leader for us on both sides of the ball, and he's somebody that we certainly count on uh, in, in, in terms of our success on both sides of the football. That is great to hear. And he's look at this matchup with York coming up. It is one of these states, uh, I guess you could say, best rivalries in terms of just the passion, competitiveness, and the turnout for these matchups over the years. You know, one team, you know, York can be 5-0, and Tab can be 0-5, or vice versa. Tab can be 5-0, and York can be 0-5, and a game still a 17-16 slobber knocker, as you know, from watching it over the years. And I know you got a lot of respect for Doug Pereira and the Falcons over there. Uh, give me a thought on, on this matchup and what it means. I know you're doing a military appreciation night. I know honoring the military during the game. And it's, it's always a game that people look forward to and circle on the calendar, whether they're a Tab alum, a York grad, or just even a fan of Bay Rivers and high school football in general? Sure. So let me start with the, the military appreciation first. This is something that uh, that that we really wanted to do, uh, both me and Coach Pereira over at York, to honor our military. Uh, it's uh, it, the, the festivities are going to start at 630 at Bailey, about 30 minutes prior to the game. Uh, we're going to have the ground zero flag, the flag that actually flew at ground zero, and then was also 
uh, taken over to Iraq when they when they caught Saddam Hussein. And a picture of that particular flag is at the site where that happened. And so we will be uh, presenting that flag at the beginning of our ceremony uh, with uh, with actually Cam Dixon, who will be bringing that flag out. And then we've got five players from each of our teams that are going to bring out each branch of the military's flag one by one uh, for every uh, branch of the military. And then we're going to follow that up with uh, our color guard, follow that up with our band and the national anthem. And it's just going to be a, a great opportunity to really just uh, let our men and women in uniform know how much we appreciate all they do. And uh, I think it holds special meaning coming four days after September 11th and uh, just an opportunity to honor those people that continue to fight that war on terrorism and also to our first responders as well who, uh, you know, who put their lives on the line each and every day. And we can't forget to remember that the freedoms that we have and the protection that we have comes at a cost and it's not free. And so uh, it's just an opportunity for us to share that with our community and especially our young people that will be in attendance for that game. That's so awesome, Coach. I mean, in, in this world where you have so many negative headlines at times and you hear about the bad things more than the good things, it's very commendable and honorable what you all are doing to uh, honor our country here after that. Just, uh, obviously, t- we're on the 22 year anniversary, 22 year anniversary of 9 11 that took place and four days after that date of 9 11. The last thing to get you out, just the, the thought on the matchup with York, because obviously getting to 3 0 would be a big deal for you all as you all start to think about. I know it's still early, it's September, but you always want to get those PowerPoints and get wins that will help your positioning to try to get in the postseason, you all competing in uh, Class 3 Region A. Yeah, absolutely. Now, and, and, and to go back to what you were saying earlier about Doug and the program that he's had over at York, he's done a great job over the years. Doug is one of the longstanding coaches in the BRD, and consistency at the head coach position is key, and he's done a great job. Uh, from a discipline and accountability and, and, uh, you know, he has a system on offense and defense and, uh, and, and, and it is not a, a game uh, that we take lightly at all. Of course, uh, we, we have uh, every reason to go in here and to, to give everything we have in order to compete at a high level, to have an opportunity to, to beat these guys. But, uh, but in terms of, you know, the way that we're approaching it, it's, 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 it is the next game up. It obviously has uh, additional meaning because of who it is and the rivalry and how many years this has been going on for. Uh, but our goal is to be 1-0 every week. And, and so our focus is getting better, taking care of the little things, uh, and then uh, hopefully those, those big things like the wins take care of themselves. Well, off to a very fine start in year one at the helm of the Tab Tigers. John Byron, so kind of join us. Go on out there and support the Military Appreciation Night and just one of the best rivalries we have in the Commonwealth and certainly here in the 757 area code as the Tab Tigers take on the York Falcons. Uh, thank you so much for the time today. All the best to you on Friday night, and we'll be uh, keeping in touch for sure. Absolutely. Matt, thanks so much for having me on, and go Tigers. There you go. Go Tigers to support the orange and black as Tab takes on York coming up on Friday night. It is on the hash with half. And we'll come back with some more, including some more sound from a victorious head football coach and take you around the 757 area code. It is on the hash with Hatfield. Subscribe, like, and share to our Virginia Beach Sportsplex YouTube channel.